Hi, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Lectus Training on Sunday Readings. Today we'll prepare for the readings of April 28, the fifth Sunday of Easter. Our main references. We also refer to the book New Exploring God's Word of Word and Life Publications. The introduction to each of the readings is taken from the book New Exploring God's Word. For the first reading, Saul of Tarsus, a zealous young Pharisee, had vowed to exterminate the followers of Jesus. But on his way to Damascus, Jesus appeared to him and conquered his heart. Saul was baptized, and from then on, he was a new man. In the first reading, St. Luke describes the initial difficulties found by the Apostle among the Christian community of Jerusalem and with the Jews. Brothers and sisters, the Lector's Guide of the Sacred Heart Parish of Comunin, Quezon City suggests the following to help you in your proclamation. To highlight the suspicion and fear that the disciples felt about Saul. Shift to pervasive tone as Barnabas convinced them what Saul, about Saul's sincerity. Relate with conviction Saul's witnessing for the Lord after his acceptance by the disciples. The last paragraph should be read with confident assurance that the Holy Spirit will continually guide the church. Here are a few more tips to help you in your proclamation. Let your tone convey an understanding of Paul's situation and motives. The tone that introduces Barnabas should suggest he was an ally who made things better. Give this narration the feel of dialogue spoken by Barnabas. Don't be too upbeat here or the news of the efforts of the Hellenists to kill him will seem humorous. The tone shifts here to one of fraternal concern. This is a deep down piece that's not subject to circumstances. Stress the role of the Holy Spirit. Say Barnabas, Barnabas, Damascus, Damascus, Hellenists, Hellenists, Caesarea, Caesarea, Tarsus, Judea or Judea, Galilee, Samaria or Samaria. Now let's practice with the full text. For a much better proclamation, let me remind you again, red lines suggest you stress the word. Yellow lines suggest you look at the assembly. Look at the assembly when you begin, when you're in the middle, the end of every thought and sentence. One slash means a short pause, Two slashes mean a longer pause. Please do the same for the second reading. And now the full text. First reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him not believing that he was a disciple. Then Barnabas took charge of him and brought him to the apostles, and he reported to them how he had seen the Lord and that he had spoken to him, and how in Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. He moved about freely with them in Jerusalem and spoke out boldly in the name of the Lord. He also spoke and debated with the Hellenists, but they tried to kill him. And when the brothers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea 
and sent him on his way to Tarsus. The church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. It was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord, and with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, it grew in numbers. The word of the Lord, responsorial psalm. This psalm is a triumphant prayer of those who, despite the abyss they are faced with, are as certain of the justice and consolation that comes after, knowing that the Father is with them. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. I will fulfill my vows before those who fear the Lord. The lowly shall eat their fill. They who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your hearts live forever. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of the nations shall bow down before him. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. To him alone shall bow down all who sleep in the earth. Before him shall bend all who go down into the dust. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. And to him my soul shall live. My descendants shall serve him. Let the coming generation be told of the Lord, that they may proclaim to a people yet to be born the justice he has shown. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. The second reading emphasizes the need for deeds of love in the life of a believer. Together with faith in Jesus, this is the condition we have to fulfill in order to fully keep God's commandment. Then shall we be able to feel that we are in communion with him and experience in us the presence of his gift. To help you in your proclamation, again, Lecter's Guide of the Sacred Heart Parish of Quezon City suggests that without the benefit of knowing the history be behind St. John's purpose, point out and emphasize these salient points. First, love not in word or speech only, but in deed and truth. Second, God is greater than our hearts. Third, and he knows everything. Fourth, believe in his Son. And fifth, love one another. To help you in your proclamation, here are a few more points or tips. This is the fourth of six consecutive weeks we read from John's first letter. The opening salutation and the blunt message call for blunt delivery. Eye contact with the assembly and sincerity of tone will be key your delivery. In whatever our hearts condemn, in this line, means no matter what our hearts or consciences may charge us with. Beloved, sets the tone of this sentence, John is trying to dispel self-doubt. As if speaking to one beloved member of the assembly, speak these lines with sincerity and authority. It is the gift of the Spirit that enables us to stand confident before the Lord. This is what the line, this line says. Now let's practice with the full text. Second reading. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Children, let us love not in word or speech, but in deed and truth. 
Now this is how we shall know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts before him in whatever our hearts condemn. For God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God and receive from him whatever we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And his commandment is this. We should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who keep his commandments remain in him and he in them. And the way we know that he remains in us is from the spirit he gave us. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Remain in me as I remain in you, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me will bear much fruit. Alleluia, Alleluia. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Join me again next week for the readings of May 5, the sixth Sunday of Easter. Until then, goodbye and God bless you all. Again, thank you.